the main aim of this tutorial is, introduce, is to introduce you to some food groups. So we're going to start off nice and simply with our carbohydrates. Now I am very aware that in your biology at GCC and potentially if you're studying at A level as well, you're looking at a lot more detail than this. Okay, so I, we're not going to talk here. Uh, we're not going to talk here about your amylases. We're not going to talk here about uh, um, monosaccharides, disaccharides. That's for elsewhere. But if obviously you can link that knowledge to here, the main point I want to get to, across to you in sort of a sports science sense is that carbohydrates are an excellent source of energy. And I want to be absolutely explicit with this: carbohydrates are the preferred fuel source um, of all cells, okay? So they are the preferred source of energy. So we can use lipids, uh, fats, we'll talk about them in a second, for energy we can use a small amount of protein, we'll come to that in a second, but effectively carbohydrates broken down into glucose are the preferred fuel source for all cells in the body. Now, we do, because of that, we do need to be able to store uh, carbohydrates and carbohydrates are stored as muscle and liver, liver, muscle and liver glycogen. Okay. Now I also want to stress here that it's our glycogen store which is much more significant. It's much bigger, and it's also worth noting this is about a two hours worth store of of carbohydrate, glycogen. Okay, and we're storing it in these locations. Notice it's in the muscle as well, and of course that's an immediate sort of source of energy for systems for energy systems, uh, the lactic acid system, the aerobic system that use glycogen as the fuel source. Now, we also take these and we are processing them into sugars. They're processed into sugars. So of course, carbohydrates are to some degree, some lesser or greater extent, they are long chains, okay? But our sugars, specifically our glucose, is what we call a monosaccharide. It's a single sugar, right? So we can absorb that into the bloodstream, we can transport that to cells, and of course, it is one of the reactants of aerobic respiration as well as in the lactic acid anaerobic system as well. A couple of other things I mentioned already, I'll just make sure we've got a note of it here. We've got up to two hours store, okay? So consider um, activities that go for longer than two hours, let's say road cycling, let's say marathon running, they're gonna need some kind of refueling strategy to make sure that we get glycogen into the body. And as a general rule of thumb, changes very much uh, person to person, athlete to athlete, we're looking about 50, 55 to 60 percent of dietary intake is going to be in the form of carbohydrates. Now, I'm not going to get into low GI, high GI, all that kind of stuff. You can read around that if you're interested, but that's our predominant focus for this particular area. Can I stress again energy and the preferred energy source in the human body? Okay, now we're going to move this further. We're going to talk about fats and lipids. Lipids, fats and lipids. Fats and lipids are the same thing, of course. Fats slash lipids. And again, we're not. Gonna, I'm not going to get into your lipases. I'm not going to get into the uh, the process of uh, emulsification of uh, fats. We're not going to get into glycerol and fatty acids. That's for your other subjects. But that, of course, is in the background here. But can I stress for you? And you might be thinking, hang on a minute, that doesn't look very fatty. That image. We've got oils. We've got oily fish. We've got nuts. We've got pulses. We've got avocado. I tried to sh show you some healthy fats, and I'll come back to that in a second. Of course, we could have hamburgers on here. Of course, we could have cream cakes. But these sort of represent fats as well. So we must be able to recognise that. Um, now, the, one of the critical points here is that fats are also a source of energy, okay? But this energy is for low intensity work. So as you're sitting there, presumably wherever you are at the moment, you are probably sort of burn, doing some beta oxidation, burning burning some fat. Because it's low intensity work, you're not moving at, at any kind of pace, right? You're probably stationary. Secondly, um, one of the really important parts of the role of fat is it spares, or it leaves over, it spares glycogen. Now remember, glycogen was a roughly a two hour store. So it stores glycogen, so it spares glycogen stores, <laughs> what am I writing, honestly? <laughs> Messing this right up, for higher intensity. So what we find is that fats are a really good source of energy at low intensity, and that leaves this glycogen, that two hour limited store, for a slightly higher intensity, for example, when we're exercising. Other things, fats are also used for absorption. Okay, oh, I spell this wrong, absorption, absorption. Fats are used for absorption of fat soluble vitamins, okay, of fat soluble vitamins. So it's not just, um, a fuel source, it's also the case that fat has a role to play in ingesting other nutrients. In this case, fat soluble vitamins. We'll come back to that in future tut tutorials. It's really important for health, so we mustn't see fat as necessarily negative. 
for example, people who follow more of a keto diet actually eat quite a lot of fat. Okay, so I'm not advocating, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that there are alternative diets and some people use those alternative diets. Let's go uh, forward a bit more. Of course, if we have too much fat in our diet, what's gonna happen? It's gonna equal weight gain. Fairly obvious point, but if we eat too many cakes, we're gonna put weight on. It's not a particularly difficult one to uh, put on here. And the other point I would make is that same point, too much fat, it limits joint flexibility as well. So it's not just a weight issue, but if we become um, rounder, let's say, that can have an impact on our joints not being able to perform their work as well. So joint flexibility becomes an issue. Now, a couple of details before we move on to proteins. I really want you to make sure you've got a good grasp of this. So first things first, we want to be really careful with what we call saturated fats. Now, saturated fats, these tend to come from animal sources. Think about from beef, from lard, from butter, this kind of stuff, from dairy. So it's from animal. And again, a small amount's absolutely fine. You probably you might enjoy cheese, for example, but it contains what we call LDL cholesterol, low density lipoprotein cholesterol, and it's this stuff that can cause issues of atherosclerosis, atheroma in the blood. We also want to be really careful. My computer fan's very noisy, so I hope it's not bothering you there. Um, we also want to be careful with trans fats, okay? Trans fats, these come in the form typically of fast food and they're very Moorish guys. You get the sensation that you want to eat lots of them. These are directly linked to heart disease. So be really careful with trans fats over a period of time. Again, no one's saying you can't eat them here and there, no problem, but be a little bit cautious on a regular basis. And finally, I just wanna make sure that we're happy with this notion of cholesterol. Okay, cholesterol is fatty substance in the blood fatty substance in blood. So it's actually fat which is gonna cause cholesterol issues. Now I'm gonna just stress again, we're talking specifically about LDLs. Uh, HDLs can actually help remove LDLs. Um, high density lipoprotein is gonna be relatively healthy. Now, we're gonna finish off here, and I don't normally do this, but I do want you to know that I've got a really big blog post on the role of proteins. And you might wanna, it's written for teachers, really, P teachers, but don't have a look at it as well. You might find it really valuable if you're a student. But we wanna really get across the, about proteins is that they're responsible for growth and repair, okay? So obviously we could be interested in the sort of the growth of human beings as children, for example, but I wanna specifically focus on the adaptation process. So if we train following the principles of training, for example, it's proteins that are gonna generate this. Now you probably know, I'm, in fact I know you know, that proteins are broken into amino acids and amino acids are the building blocks then of human proteins. So yes, just to be clear, human beings take on proteins, we digest them, break them down into amino acids, and then we build them again into different human proteins. That is literally what we do. And I'm just gonna mention to you, because you guys know it from your biology, that that process, once they're ingested, takes place at the ribosomes. You guys studied that, of course, and they're rebuilt into human proteins. Now an example of that, a really lovely example of that, is muscle tissue. Okay, so the, the, the proteins required for muscle tissue are formed that way. So we, yes, we eat a piece of salmon, it contains protein, we break that protein into amino acids, we deliver it uh, to the cell where the ribosomes form it into muscle tissue, muscle proteins. That, of course, is exactly why this is important for us as sports scientists. And again, if can I just take this a bit for, further, it can also form HB, <laughs> can form HB. Now remind yourself, this has nothing to do with pencils, this is haemoglobin, which of course is the, the vehicle uh, for the transportation of oxygen and to a degree CO2 as well. So it's really important for us um, from a sports science perspective. Um, proteins also forms, form enzymes. So think about your glycolytic and aerobic enzymes, your, your phosphocreatine enzymes. These are structured through proteins. Now let's finish this off strong. Last point from me today, that meant to be a different color. Meant to be a different, what is wrong with me? meant to be a different color. I just want to say here that in general, we're gonna have about 15 to 20% is gonna be our protein intake. Anyway, I hope that's been useful for you. Uh, there's our sort of our, our three big pictures. Cheers.